Hello. There was a dog outside. Okay, so it's 3.30 in the afternoon, and I have other, other footage, which I'm going to insert here. Unpopular opinion, I don't like LaCroix. I am a bad hipster. This is Morph. In case you haven't seen him before, he is our 16 year old cat. He is ginormous and likes to be on my shoulder. So yeah, <laughs> the excitement of my day has been grocery shopping and and just being flummoxed by being flummoxed by how low the sun sits in the middle of the day in Wisconsin in December. It's been really nice to see everybody getting their you know holiday greenery this week. I, I'm I am terribly terribly allergic to anything pine so I have never had a real tree in my entire life for the holidays which is, is fine because I, I'd rather the trees be outside doing the oxygen thing than inside being slowly dying <laughs> that's just me but you know when you're you're deathly deathly eh, not deathly pretty deathly allergic to, to pine things you kind of are okay with that the skeletal rat is totally mugging back there, isn't he? And the zombie bunny. Hello, zombie bunny. So, I thought, because, you know, I can, that I would do a little kind of adjacently you booktuber, adjacently booktuber thing, but with art books I've been getting lately. So, yes, let's look at books. So, the first one is... Feminine and Fauna by Kilda Erica, who I absolutely love. But her... It's just so pretty, guys. And this has a nice foreword, and she has several other books that I have two of them. One is, um, is kind of more of a how-to-make work like hers. And one of them is about the phenomenon of pop art. Uh, pop surrealism, specifically, so... They're cool. I'll like them. Uh, the next is a, a little zine by my friend Carolyn Pam Pampleham. I had to look at how to say her last name. Eh, can you do the thing? It's not a show, it is it? Maybe that's better. There we go. Carolyn Pampleham. Um, and... I, I've known Carolyn for years. Northeast of Wisconsin, our community is kind of ridiculously small. But somehow I have not actually bought any of Carolyn's work before. I have like some of her, like, she does freebies at things, so I have some of those, but I had never like bought any of her stuff, so I bought a bunch of her stuff. Look at that mousy. Look at that mousy. That mouse is literally my favorite thing she has ever done, and it's inspired by Redwall. I love him. He is amazing and beautiful. And I got one of her prints. And I have this amazing uh, gambit print 
that is currently over here. So, and you're not gonna see it. <laughs> and I talked about these um, on the first, today's the third, but I got these really beautiful sketchbooks from Von Art. Rulin. Tim Von Rulin. He is a Wisconsin artist also. But yeah, his stuff is beautiful. The books are lovely. I mean, look at that thing. Ugh. Look at these beautiful creatures. And it came with a print too. If you watched yesterday's Vlogmas, I mentioned how much I, I love deer. Okay, so the, the next book I have is one I haven't read through yet. I've only looked through it a little bit. And it's The Artist Project, What Artists See When They Look at Art. And it was done by the Met, and it's huge. It's like, I could kill a man with it. Which is my judgment for most things. But yeah, it's just... It's huge, it's beautiful, and I love, I love knowing what other artists think and see and what they're inspired by. It's why I kind of stalk all the artists on social media. I mentioned this in one of the vlogs in early November, I want to say. The art book for the Chronicles of Alexandria which is, it's the world that Critical Role happens in, or at least the first campaign of it, who knows with the second campaign, but it's, this is the scary, pretty edition that's all gold leaf and le leather and, well, let's find us a page, and amazing art. It just has all these great Easter eggs and artists that I love and just amazing stuff. Of course, I can't find it right off the top of my head, but one of the artists, I was like, I recognize your style. I recognize you from Teen Wolf. And it was the same artist. I was really proud <laughs> that I recognized them. And Tess Fowler, who does, who illustrates Kid Lobotomy, did like a beautiful spread in here. She did a lot of work in here. Um, friend of the show. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's got, it has all these like great, great like almost stories in it and it's treated as an in-world text from the Cobalt Reserve which is the big scary world library there. It's beautiful. I love it. Eventually we're gonna have to have like a, a, a time with it. I'm gonna set up a camera and we're gonna have a look-see. Now these two are kind of older things. It's an art book of Annette Messenger, Messenger's work which I, I love her stuff. She's French and she's very much in, when I do my conceptual like sculptural work, she's much more like the kind of stuff I do. I mean, just like look at that installation on the cover. This is, this is my, my, my sculptural haven. And it was left on, a, when I was in art school, Somebody left it on a table. Oh, there's a good two-page spread of it. Somebody left it on a table in a classroom and didn't come back for it. And my boss was like, she seems like somebody you would like. You should take it. So that's how I came to be in possession of it. And <laughs> this last one is literally probably my prized possession, which sounds so weird. Minefields. Try and get the glare off of that. Um, and it's the art of Jacques Yerka, which I'm probably saying it wrong. He is a Polish surrealist. And it's accompanied by short stories by Harlan Nelson, which Harlan Nelson is a complete and utter ass. But he writes beautifully. And just, oh, let's find a good one here. I mean, they're all good. I shouldn't say find a good one. More like find my favorite one, which would be this one which is called Please Don't Slam the Door. And it's one of those things that you might not, wow, that's really good reflective lighting there. You might not know it to look at my art, but this was really a foundational text for me as a baby artist. I got this when I was 11. I am now much, much older than 11 by like, by at least a multiple of three. <laughs> a little bit more than a multiple of three. Not quite a multiple of four, but I'm getting there. <laughs> And even the way that I, I marry text and 
art started here. This is where it started for me. An example of the writing. Here is the story that accompanies that piece. In the great tree of life that grows on the outermost edge of forever, a little boy sits in the whispering foli foliage and strings dreams on a silk thread. His house is ready for the hookup. The telegraph poles are all in place, stretching to infinity. All that is needed is the silk thread with its pearls of dreams strung neatly and completely. He is a beautiful child and his house is warm. His world is filled with light and his dreams are sweet. Soon he will have his thread fully strung and he will complete the hookup and then he will begin to send dreams back to the places less filled with imagination than here in this lovely tree house. This is a beautiful child and his dreams are sweet. His name is Wonder. You know, every artist has foundational artist and foundational texts. The things that exist in the DNA of our work. And for me, Jack Yerka and Harlan Ellison are probably one of the oldest. It's, I mean, everybody has like Van Gogh is their first artist, and Van Gogh was probably my 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 first like historic artist, and I love his use of color. But he, it's like what he was interested in and what he did were were not my jam, though I love his work. Unfortunately, most of the work that of his that I really really identify with are things that are, are part of the oriental orientalist um, influence on art in the West and that has an entire issue. Other artist that was that is part of my my uh, DNA at, at a cellular level is Piet Mondrian. Which again you would not think that from looking at my work, but he is uh, especially like because this is more of a conceptual connection for me because he was interested in jazz jazz was one of those things that he just loved and like one of his very late pieces is called boogie woogie boogie woogie bop and it's him trying to figure out the syncopation visually and it's just so great it's so wonderful and i i love his entire semiotics i love that he created his own semiotic system and that that's one of those places where it's where it's in the dna of my work and this kind of went all the way from YouTube, from it went all the way from BookTube to art inspiration thing. So sorry about that kind of transition, because I would never be inconsistent in a YouTube video. I have things that I need to do. Um, I might video it. I might not. I promised a friend of mine that I would do a drawing of them, of a drawing of them, a drawing for them, because the, he has this idea in his head of a soft femme orc and I love that so I'm going to to draw them draw him a thing I'm going to draw him a thing we might see you later we might not see you later probably not it's like coming up on four because of all the issues I have had in filming this if you see me you see me if you don't you don't you'll see me tomorrow in the comments like tell me like your favorite like artists who are part of your DNA writers visual artists, musicians, doesn't matter, just tell me in the comments. Uh, and if you have like art book suggestions, suggest them to me because I love me a good art book, clearly. Okay, courage.